Hi everybody and welcome back to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we are working on a 2005 BMW 3 Series and the customer complaint is that the check engine light comes on intermittently. Now the customer has been to other shops, was even helped by the roadside assistance, but every time they clear the codes, it might take an hour, a day or even a week, but the check engine light always comes back on. Now it hasn't come back on since the last time it was cleared, but obviously the customer wants this issue fixed permanently. So let's see if we can diagnose this together. Now before we continue with this video, let's go back to my previous video. In that video, I repaired a Lexus Hybrid with a canvas issue caused by a cooling fan inside the hybrid battery pack. Now, in the comment section of that video, a lot of you guys asked me, Dan, we would really love to know what's wrong with that cooling fan. So I decided to call the guys at AC-Tronics. Now, AC-Tronics is the company that repairs all the automotive electronics from my shop and have been doing so for years. I called them and I said, we would really love to know what's wrong with this cooling fan. And they said, no problem, ship it out and we will have a look. Now, today I've got the answer and they even included a little video. So big shout out to AC-Tronics and this is what they have got to say. The fan uses a brushless motor and it's powered by the 12 volt battery inside the vehicle. A brushless motor differs from a brush DC motor in such a way that it has more than one winding or phase and it cannot run directly of a 12 volt battery. It needs electronics to drive all the individual phases or windings. The motor electronics energizes the individual phases in a correct sequence and duration to provide a smooth rotation. A side effect of energizing and de-energizing the phases is that the power drawn from the supply side is not a constant current, it's chopped. This chopping of the current is what can be visualized on the oscilloscope with the failed fan. The main reason why this chopping can be picked up is a storage capacitor that has failed, so it can no longer provide a local buffer for this chopped current. Think of the capacitor as a flywheel or an accumulator. The fan had its capacitors replaced with new ones and the chopped current now stays locally inside the fan. The fan is good as new. Now I noticed in the comments that some of you guys already thought it was a storage capacitor or smoothing capacitor and you were absolutely right. Great job. Now again, shout out to the guys at AC-Tronics for helping us out. Now let's continue with the video. Now let's first check if maybe one of the codes have returned since the codes were cleared because obviously that would make our life a lot easier. Um, let's go to engine. Read fault code. But unfortunately, right now, no fault codes are stored. So we are dealing with an intermittent fault and right now that fault is not present. But fortunately we do have got a lead to go by because the customer told me when they did have the fault codes they were all Valvetronic related. Now most of the times intermittent faults are because the circumstances change. Now the circumstances might change due to vibrations, hot or cold conditions or even moisture. I mean your car might be fine on a sunny day but it might give you all kind of issues on a very wet and rainy day. Now, when you're dealing with intermittent Valvetronic issues, a good place to start your tests is at the Valvetronic motor itself. There you can check the motor, powers and grounds, etc. But to get access to that motor, we first need to remove some plastic parts. Now I removed a little bit more than is strictly necessary to do the measurements and tests we're about to do. But by removing the valve cover, we get a great insight of how the Valvetronic system operates. 
Valvetronic is a variable valve lift system. On a conventional engine, the RPM is controlled by using a throttle valve in the intake. On this Valvetronic engine, the RPM is controlled by how far the intake valves open. So at idle, the intake valves only open a tiny bit. But at full throttle, the intake valves will open all the way. This is the Valvetronic motor and through a warm gear it can turn the Valvetronic shaft. On the Valvetronic shaft there are lobes that control the amount the intake valves are being opened. At the end of the shaft there is a position sensor that registers the position of the Valvetronic shaft. Now when you hit the throttle and the shaft doesn't reach its desired position it will flag a fault code and I think that's exactly what's happening on this engine. Right now I've got no fault code stored so I assume the system is working as it should. Now with a scan tool I can bi-directionally control that Valvetronic shaft to rotate and when I do that since I've got the valve cover removed you guys can see exactly how the system should operate if everything is working normal. Now turning that Valvetronic shaft is basically the equivalent or the same as opening your throttle valve. Now this engine still has got a conventional throttle valve and is there for a couple of reasons. The main reason being it's there as a failsafe or a backup in case the Valvetronic system stops working. If the Valvetronic system stops working the throttle valve takes over. Now apart from the engine light coming on the driver doesn't really notice a lot of difference. Now I hear you wonder if the driver doesn't really notice a difference, why is the Valvetronic system then even there? Now that has to do with efficiency. On a conventional engine, when the throttle valve is partially closed, behind that throttle valve there is a vacuum. And the cylinders are having a hard time pulling in fresh air bypassing that partially open throttle valve. Now on a Valvetronic engine, the throttle valve is always fully opened. That also means there is no vacuum inside the intake and it's a lot easier to suck in fresh air, making this engine more efficient. Now enough talk because we still haven't found or fixed anything. The next thing I want to do is a wiggle and tap test. I want to wiggle connectors, wiggle wires and tap components and in the meanwhile bi-directionally controlling that Valvetronic shaft and hopefully at one point it will stop operating and set a fault code. If that doesn't work I want to apply a heat test. I want to apply heat to some components, do the same test and hopefully it will fail at some point and that will help us narrow in to the real fault and hopefully that way we can diagnose the vehicle. Now I wiggled wires, wiggled connectors, tapped components, but everything just stayed working until I started warming up this Valvetronic motor and it's still warm. It's not too hot, it's just warm to the touch. Now when I'm trying to move it right now, the scan tool gives me a message and it actually tells me um, procedure terminated, check fault code memory and when we go to the fault code memory, we now have got two faults. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it says Valvetronic internal vault and Valvetronic servo motor. Now this is the Valvetronic servo motor. Now we can check if the command is there by hooking up a simple light bulb.
So I hooked up a light bulb to the connector of that valve tronic motor. Now when I command that shaft to move, that light bulb should light up. Now if it does, that means the commands to the motor are just fine and that motor should have moved. Now it didn't, so that would mean we have got a bad motor. So let's send the command. And the test light lit up. So that means the command to the motor are just fine and the motor should have moved. Now let's reconnect the motor and let's command that shaft to move again. There we go, sending the command and the motor didn't move. And I'm getting that message on the scan tool again that something is wrong. Now what I have done, I have waited 30 minutes and allowed the motor to cool back down again. Right now, it's cool or even cold to the touch. So let's try to command it to move again. And as you can see, now it's functional again. So this explains why our problem was intermittent. Our problem is heat related. We have now confirmed that our problem is within the electric valvetronic motor. So let's remove it and install a new one. Now removing this motor is very simple. Just disconnect the connector, remove these two 10 mil nuts and the motor should come right out. Now here in front of me, I've got the old Valvetronic motor and a brand new one. Now, what I'm about to show you in the next step, I don't consider to be 100% proof that the motor is bad, but it is very typical and I do see this all the time. And I also see other techs do this test. Now, let me know in the comment section what you think of this test and is it proof that the motor is bad or at least that it's failing. Now do consider that this motor is cooled down right now and it is functional. Now this is a brand new Valvetronic motor and this is the old one we just removed from this engine. Now what's very typical and what I see all the time is when I measure from one pin to the body of the motor on a new motor, I get no reading. It's very well insulated and it should be because it's brand new. Now when I do this, on a motor that's failing, I always get some kind of reading. It is high, right now it's 2800 ohms, but we got some path to the body of this motor. Now, what do you think? Is this proof that the motor is bad or that it's failing? Let me know in the comments. Installing the new motor is very straightforward. Just insert the motor and don't worry if the valve tronic shaft moves a little because we need to do a relearn when we're done anyway. Install the two 10 mil nuts, reconnect the connector, and we're done. When we installed the new motor, we slightly changed the angle of the Valvetronic shaft, and that's why we need to do a Valvetronic relearn. We need to tell the computer the end stops of the shaft so it knows what's fully open and what's fully closed again. I still need to reinstall the valve cover and build everything back together again. Then I'll take the car home with me and drive it for a day before returning it to the customer. That's always a smart thing to do, especially when you're dealing with intermittent faults. Now I really hope this video can help you find your intermittent faults. Now I drove the car home and the customer has been driving this car for some time now and the fault never returned. So I guess we can call this a fix. Now I really hope you liked this video and when you did, please subscribe to my channel. And when you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I upload a new video. And remember, diagnose then, fix it again. See you next time guys.